So the show opens up with NXT champion Braun Breaker coming down to the ring and cutting a promo. He mentioned his match last week against J.D. McDonough before immediately calling out the NXT UK champion Tyler Bate. They also put McDonough over before getting down to business, said he was the first NXT UK champion, and he'll be the last. With NXT Europe around the corner, he feels that there's no way to better kick that off than to unify the two championships. And long story short, Breaker agreed, challenged him for a title versus title match in two weeks, and NXT Worlds collide, and the segment ended with the two facing off against each other, holding up their belts. A video package on Gallus then played, which led into their NXT Tag Team title match with Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. But as Briggs and Jensen were about to head to the ring, we went to the back, where the pair was helping to break up a fight between Fallon Henley and Lash Legend uh, before they all headed to the ring. After a commercial, eventually the champions made their way out. So this uh, version of Gallus in the tag match was Wolfgang and Mark Coffey with Joe Coffey, who I believe was wearing Sergio Tacchini. I believe that's what that logo was outside the ring. First two and a half minutes of the match was Gallus beating down Jensen until he was able to make a hot tag and was able to clear the ring. But we went to picture in picture. By the time we were back in full screen, Jensen was being beaten down again. At exactly the eight-minute mark, we got another hot tag, and that was the beginning of the end. Briggs ran wild for a bit, but then Lash Legend came back down to the ring, started getting into it with Henley. When Briggs and Jensen went out to break it up, they were jumped by Pretty Deadly. And the referee is standing there and does not call for the bell. At all. Nothing. <laughs> and I thought the rule was, if somebody from the outside attacks somebody who wasn't in the match, the match continues. But if somebody comes from the back and attacks somebody in the match, then we've got a disqualification. We don't get that. Instead, as those six brawl to the back... He counted Briggs and Jensen out. <laughs> so at the 8th minute, 46 second mark, Gallus can play to the ref. They were jumped by Diamond Mind. The Creed brothers and Damian Kemp were the ones who actually did the jumping while Roderick Strong was on the outside cheering him on. They sent Gallus packing, went to another break. When we got back, we got a segment with Chase U. Andre Chase introduced a guest student that they met when the whole college went to the UK. It's Charlie Dempsey. And as soon as this guy comes on screen, you're like, okay. And I wasn't watching NXT UK. I completely forgot that this guy was signed. <laughs> this man is schooled in the catches catch can tradition. As well he should be because his real name is Bailey Matthews. He's the son of Darren Matthews, better known as William Regal. And damn, does this guy not look like a professional wrestler. Man, I don't know what his experience level is. I have not seen him before, but this dude, if nothing else, has got the look down. And this whole thing was really cheesy at times, too. It's Chase U, so there was some cheese involved with the reaction shots of the students of Dempsey tearing people up. He quickly tapped one out before beating up on Bodie Hayward, including snatching his nose while he was in a choke. Chase broke him up, told Dempsey that maybe they got the wrong guy to come in and do a demonstration. Dempsey called the class soft and told him to do some homework by Googling Billy Robinson. So probably going to get Dempsey and, uh, and Bodie again, if not uh, Dempsey and uh, Andre Chase and... You know, he's in this role now, and he's been, you know, again, every time I see Andre Chase Russell, I remember, you know, how good he is and how fun it is to actually watch him. So a match between these two, I'm going to be all for. Then it was time for the Grayson Waller effect, his new talk show segment. So he's on the cutting edge of content innovation. While other shows may be about the guest, this one's all about him. He then brings out Apollo Crews and... Apollo calls him a low-budget version of The Miz, which the crowd chanted at Waller. Waller asks him how he feels to go home and tell his kids that Daddy couldn't cut it on Mondays and Fridays, so now he's back in NXT. And I'm thinking to myself, man, he really kind of ran down NXT there. You don't really want to do that. Sure, it's developmental, but do you really want to give that impression? But Cruz did a good job shooting back on him and saying that he tells his kids that on both of those days, he's been a champion. And when it comes to be Tuesdays, soon enough, he'll be a champion there, too. And he punched Waller in the face and rolled out. This was a lot. Of, this went on for a while, too. It probably went on, <coughs> pardon me, for too long. But 
Waller was is really good at what he does, and he's going to be he and Carmelo Hayes, I would think, at some point, Tiffany Stratton, we'll get to her a little later on, throw her in the mix. Of some of the names that are down there right now, who you would think could be ready to go to the main roster, and I'm not saying Tiffany Stratton's ready by work rise, or Grayson Waller, for that matter. They could absolutely stand to use more time, but you look at the packages of all three of those people, and it's really hard to not to believe that they – look, he was up there already with A.J. Styles, and in fact he mentioned that, you know, referenced that in the, the, the deal that he did there when A.J. Styles came down to wrestle him on NXT TV. It's going to be sooner rather than later before he ends up on the main roster. Gallus was then escorted through the back by security when Pridley deadly stopped them. They just fired him up some more, and they mocked him as security dragged Gallus off. Mackenzie Mitchell then interviewed Mr. Stone and Vaughn Wagner backstage. Wagner said there won't be much left of Tyler Bate by the time he gets through with him, and he still wants Braun Breaker. Cameron Grimes defeated Javier Bernal, who is a uh, person that they're going to be doing a little bit with here, looks like at least. Before the match, they showed Bernal talking to a security member, and we'll get to him uh, last week about how he was going to challenge and beat up Grimes this week. Up in the catbird seats there, Joe Gacy and the Dyad were watching, and before the match, they wished Grimes good luck. He didn't need much of it. Match went three minutes and five seconds, and Bernal got in a little bit of offense, but Grimes took over and at the end delivered the cave-in double foot stop for the pin. After the match, he stared down Gacy and his goons. It was then time for a Blair Davenport angle showcasing who, or a vignette showcasing who she is. Uh, for anybody who has never seen her work on NXT UK, or as her work is B Priestley over in Japan and uh, the UK and everywhere else for that matter. After the show went to break, we got a vignette of Alba Fire, who she comes from a family of fire keepers in Scotland, and she's going to continue to rep Scotland, and apparently she's going to continue to bring up the name of Latch Legend, who she mentioned, and uh, I guess there's still a possibility that they will be handcuffed together. I have seen enough of those matches. Blair Davenport then went on to defeat Indy Hartwell, and... You know, the, the match was secondary here when it came to Indy Hartwell. Uh, at one point during the match, Hartwell was coming back in the ring, and Davenport went for like a roll of the dice neckbreaker through the ropes, and Hartwell looked like she just about spiked herself. It, later, they showed the replay, and it, it, she didn't hit the mat, but the way she twisted, it was very, very awkward looking. Uh, the finish, unfortunately, looked worse. Davenport went for a high-angle brain buster, but even though Hartwell went up for it, Davenport just couldn't get her up and very quickly spiked her on the shoulder, got the win. After the match, Davenport delivered a V-trigger and threw Hartwell out of the ring. She then grabbed the mic and cut a promo on being the number one contender in the UK and said she'd be happy to take the NXT Women's Championship here in the States. That brought out Mandy Rose, who sauntered down to the ring while cutting a promo. She said she's the most dominant women's champion out there and demanded Davenport put some respect on her name. She was then cut off by music. And that music was of Mako Satamura, who got in Mandy's face. Long story short, we're going to have a triple uh, threat match uh, at Worlds Collide between Davenport, Satamura, and Mandy Rose. I'm not putting my money on Mandy Rose, but we'll see what happens here. Mackenzie then in interviewed Tiffany Stratton, who was sporting that new hairstyle, the pink braids, corn rose thing, whatever that thing was. Um, my lord. But it may have made sense because of the light that they had over the ring, but we'll get to that. J.D. McDonough cut a promo while he was hanging upside down because uh, he's a weirdo, I guess, uh, about not being done with Braun Breaker. Wes Lee was talking to Caden Carter and Katana Chance right after that. Long story short there, it seems like uh, it's going to be McDonough and Lee here coming up soon. They finally cut back inside the in the arena. Indy Hartwell apparently never left ringside after all this was going on. She's sitting on the apron. She asks if this is what rock bottom feels like. She's blaming herself for everything. When lo and behold, from behind her, you see him in the distance, raise up from the other side of the ring. It's Dexter Loomis. The crowd goes crazy. She turns around, sees him in there. They both do the little Dexter slither into the ring. Their eyes lock. They embrace. She kisses him, and then they leave together. He carries her up the ramp into the backs. Index is back together. Or are they? 
Afterwards, we get a shot of Vix Joseph. He's too happy. Wade Barrett, he's too sour over all this. But then they cut to the back again. Dexter put Indy down. He handed her a note and opens the doors to the performance center where there's red and blue lights and there's cops telling him to put his hands behind his back. Apparently he was able to snake Miz out of the building, has taken him to an undisclosed location, and has been on the lam ever since, but true love has brought him back to the performance center. He hands her a note, and it says, Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Indy, for now. I heart you forever. So everybody wanted Index to return. I kind of wanted that too. But they're doing whatever they're going to be doing with Dexter Loomis on the main roster. But I love Indy Hartwell. Uh, she's got a long way to go. In some ways, I wish she would leave there, go get some experience, because she's got a good look. I, but bottom line is, if she doesn't go anywhere and get some more seasoning and experience, get Dexter back to NXT, because those two together are great. We're coming up here on the break, and... The match between the Dyad and the D'Angelo family was short. It was only about five minutes. Dyad got the victory. Basically led to Tony D'Angelo running down Legato de Fantasma. And as they leave the building a little bit later on, car pulls up, window comes down, Santos Escobar. He would never forget about his familia. Get in, let's ride. Everybody looks like they're driving to the main roster now. I would assume on SmackDown. I think they would be a great fit for that. I am still upset that we never got a good series of Swerve Strickland and uh, Santos Escobar matches in NXT. I think we got one. It wasn't enough. But Tyler Bate then went on and defeated Von Wagner in a non-title match. Big battle of size versus uh, experience here. And Bate ended up getting the clean victory. Wagner looked good. That leads into Brett Bates' match against Braun Breaker. And when we get back from break, all this alliteration, we'll get into the main event. Tiffany Stratton, Wendy Chu, Lights Out match. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Wrestling Observer Live. The main event of NXT. Lights Out match. Tiffany Stratton, Wendy Chu, anything goes. Now, usually when there's a Lights Out match, it just means it's unsanctioned. They flash the lights, the lights come back up, you have a match that nothing, the company wants nothing to do with. If somebody gets hurt, it's the blood's not on our hands. In this case, they actually turned the damn lights out, and they had a blue light. And uh, this is why I'm wondering if they decided to go this route with Stratton's hair, because at least it was reflecting off in the lights that they were using. It was this weird blue and black light that they had, and at times... I didn't really have a problem with it, and I never had a problem with the Sin Cara thing, too, but I can understand why people didn't like it, and this was much, much darker than that. I mean, it was a new first time they were doing this whole thing. Craziness happening. You get all the, the wacky spots. Trash can over Stratton's head, and Chu beats it with a tennis racket. There was a pink steel chair. Turnbuckle tightening bar that Chu used was trying to choke out Stratton with and break her face with. Wendy's bed at some point got closer to the ring. They had two huge pillows in them that had Legos inside of them, which Stratton tried to follow a slam on Chew into them. She missed, so she just went and body slammed her on top of it, which looked like it sucked. And the finish that came when Tiffany th tried to throw powder outside the ring, got a kicked it back in her face. Chew then gave her a choke slam through the headboard of the bed that she had laid out. Rolled her back in the ring, hit the good night, splash for the win in 13.08. So they gave it a little bit of time. And as the show went off the air, they had the contracts being signed for the triple threat women's unification and the men's unification match coming up in two weeks at NXT Worlds Collide. This was the best thing on the show. And uh, the show was all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on to... Uh... Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. Did I really see this? And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.